night on KTN Prime. New NSSF rates begin this month amid rising corruption claims. And in the name of religion, sects in Nakuru and Kisumu reject polio vaccination. Plus, the cycle of protests, hokas paralyze operations in Mombasa and Thika of a new levies. The best thing, Mr. Chairman, is for the Attorney General to answer this. We are in one government, we are in the executive, he can answer this. And was it really above board? Probe on the standard gauge railway tender gathers momentum. This is KTN Prime with Yvonne Okwara and Wilson Buru. Well, it is a very good evening to you and welcome to KTN Prime, the most comprehensive bulletin in the country. Indeed, many thanks for joining us this 20th day of January 2014. Let's begin tonight with a national social security fund that is yet again on the chopping block as its increased deductions for workers come into effect. Now, NSSF's history of alleged mismanagement of pension contributions has left Kenyans suspicious of what then of the new rates. And as KTN Zasha Mwilu reports, NSSF still has a lot of questions to answer. They say that only two things in life are certain, death and taxes. And for many Kenyans in their retirement, taxes may well be the death of them. For years, they have religiously contributed to the mandatory National Social Security Fund. The promise was a financially secure life upon retirement. But for so many of them, it has been a trip after trip to one office after another chasing their pension. <laughs> Kipsoi Muto's experience is just but one tree in a forest of similar stories. There's a case I'm pursuing of a person who died in 1990. Up to now he has not been paid and I'm told the new system that they have cannot capture those old, 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 old claims from 1990s. These concerns are not new to Kenya and certainly not to the NSSF. The management of pension contributions by the fund has been the subject of much criticism. NSSF is currently struggling to entangle the controversies surrounding its Tasia housing project. Parliament has raised the red flag over the possibility that NSSF may be using workers' money to fund the project. Expert Karithi Murimi says NSSF's latest move to increase workers' deduction should not go unchallenged. Kenyans should be extremely worried, not only on what they are going to give now, but for the objective. If you are growing my money, then you must have an annual way of giving me the return you have made for me against the returns of other entities. Moremi says Kenyans should evaluate the Canadian pension scheme for a glimpse of how NSSF should be working. Starting in 2012, if you are under 65 and work while receiving your CPP retirement pension, you and your employer will have to make CPP contributions. Public participation and a clear flow of information on crucial changes to the scheme are what makes Canada among the trailblazers in pension management. 6% is not a small percentage. If, if, if you are going to work, let's say for argument's sake, for 30 years, and for 30 years, 6% of your income, somebody has been keeping it aside. We are talking of the watchmen, we are talking of the house hires, and all that group. Uh, you need to have given them a hope, other than the contribution side of it. Over the decades, the NSSF has been alleged to be a corridor of corruption for politicians seeking to raise funds. This harsh history has left NSSF's Board of Trustees under close scrutiny over the spirit behind these new rates for workers. 
When top leaders like the president and his deputy leave office, they are entitled to a huge retirement package that enables them to live the life they've been living while in office. The NSSF is supposed to have the same concept for you, the common monetary. But 50 years on, as the National Social Security Fund continues to increase deductions, it's yet to ensure that all Kenyans who've clocked 60 are living a comfortable life. Asham Wilu, KTN, Nairobi. And we stay with that story tonight. And just to remind you that beginning the end of this month, you will pay more to the National Social Security Fund thanks to an enhanced scheme by the government. But tax experts say, though noble, the move could turn out to be a conduit for the misuse of pensioners' money. Beginning the end of this month, working Kenyans will have to contend with an increase in the monthly deductions for the National Social Security Fund, NSSF. All this, the state says, is an effort to help you to live a somewhat comfortable life after attaining the retirement age. The mandatory retirement age in Kenya was raised from 55 to 60 in 2009. The early retirement age, however, remains 55 years. This is not a tax. This is designed for your retirement. However, when we're in a position where the cost of living is as high as it is, uh, this additional 880 could have a significant impact on some people. To achieve this, the government has ranked working Kenyans into two tiers, minimum wage T1 and upper limit T2. Those earning below 6,000 shillings per month will fall under the minimum wage T1, which means they will now contribute 360 shillings monthly. And those earning anything above 18,000 shillings will now part with 720 shillings per month with the employer contributing a similar amount. We have to have certainty in our tax policy. We have to have certainty in our expenditure policy so that we know where we're going to the next step. If we think too short term, which, which I'm concerned that we are doing today, then we're likely to see that that growth that we want from the small and medium-sized enterprises will not actually come. Tax and pension experts laud the government on its attempts to develop a sound pension scheme, but they are quick to point that this should be implemented gradually. It makes to me a lot of sense to have a good social security scheme because as people get older, uh, you know, you, you've got to take, you, you can't leave the burden to the government in the long run because as it is, we're complaining government expenditure is too high. If you now start saying we've got to fund a whole lot of pensioners, out of government funds, then clearly the books are not going to balance. Experts are warning that the increased taxation by both the central and county governments and now the latest deductions on the NSSF are working against those wishing to start and maintain small businesses, the drivers of the economy. It remains to be seen how the government will bridge the gap between the growth of the economy and the perception of a tough business environment. Jim Smart, KTN. Now those two stories lead us to our BQ tonight and tonight we are asking do you support the introduction of the new NSSF rates? Do you support the introduction of the new NSSF rates? That's right. Please do send us your comments on the number 22155. That number again is 22155. Start with a yes or no followed uh, by a brief response after that. You can also get us on Twitter. That's at KTN Kenya, at Yvonne Okwara and at Wilson underscore Buru. Remember these effects... Uh, uh, these tax rather deductions take effect at the end of this month so we'd love to hear from you on that this evening absolutely now two women have been arrested in kisumu county after they resisted the vaccination of their children against polio and in nakuru county health workers on the polio vaccination campaign faced the wrath of over 30 families also resisting the vaccination of their children fred Muller brings us the tale of how faith stands as a substitute for conventional medicine among some Kenyans. For the last three years, Beatrice Nyaugenya has been the bane of health officers deployed to vaccinate children whenever there's a polio outbreak. The mother of eight belongs to the Yesu Makende sect, the Luo for Jesus alone, that preaches healing through prayers. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Kaa hii ugonje umetendea Sasa hii watoto wangu utailinda yote The sect that has no recognized hierarchy encourages members to rely fully on faith based on the Christian Gospels. Despite the intervention of police and the threat of prosecution, she maintained a stand and chose arrest rather than vaccination for the young ones. Munga na nijionyesha kwa TV si ni uzuri. Eh. Ningekufa kabla sijaonyeshwa. Sasa cheka basi. Nikae TV na twende. Twende twende twende. Ah ah na wengine wanaenda wapi? Across the country in Nakuru, members of the Church of God sect armed themselves to the teeth to meet the challenge that the health ministry officials mounted and forced their children to hide in their houses. Pacha hali ya dawa. Mana ndawa wawo ulikuta ama ulitekenezo ukaletewa. Na ulipewa hiyo. Siyata hiyo. Unasikia. The father of nine also has a history of chasing away health workers whenever they conduct door-to-door vaccinations. As was the case in Nyando, administration police had to intervene before the little ones were vaccinated. Ta Ibrahimu kwa bibiria alisimamia watoto waki katika imani yaki. Hivyo unapo wapea, utawapea kwa nguvu, maana umekuja na serikali. Si, tumekuja na serikali. Utafanya kwa nguvu, lakini mimi, siko kwa yu. An influx of infected people from neighboring Somalia has reintroduced new strains of the disease that had been eradicated in the country by the mid-1990s. According to health officials, one infected child can reinfect 200 others within the community and at school. Uh, the child will be having the polio virus, and uh, since polio is spread through a uh, fecal oral method, if the child defecates in an open place or in a, in a place where the, the, the feces can gain access to water, then that one single case is a danger to the whole community. For now, a section of Kenyans maintains a belief in spiritual solutions for health problems with the hope that the state will not notice them whenever they break the law. For KTN Prime, I am Fredo Mulo. And from Kisumu, let's now take you to Thika Town, which was today turned into a battlefield after more than 4,000 traders staged protests over new county levies. The traders brought business in the town and adjacent areas to a standstill. And as Betty Callow reports, the traders have vowed that they will not pay the new taxes. Traders in Thika Town had a message for their county government. We do not agree. The Kiambu County government has increased levies and the traders are agitated. For an entire day, the angry traders barricaded roads and kept the security forces on their toes. <laughs> While chanting anti-Kabogo slogans, the traders lamented that the new taxes would render their businesses unprofitable. According to the traders, the increase on the taxes will see the cost of conducting trade in the region go up by 100%. For instance, for the traders to ferry their goods to the market, they would have to pay 1,000 shillings up from 500 shillings. <laughs> While addressing the crowd, Thicker Town Member of Parliament Alice Nganga faulted Kiambu Governor William Kabogo for failing to consult with the traders, urging them not to pay the levies. Our constitution, the finance bill says, you must consult with your stakeholders. The demonstrations that spilled over to the thicker superhighway saw rowdy youth destroy property and loot shops in thicker town and along the highway. Residents condemned the demonstrations turned riots, with many of them having been robbed. <laughs> Na haikuwa maandamano halali sababu ni ukora si maandamano ya kawaida. Angeitisha maandamano isiyo na funjo. The same protests were reported in Mombasa with hawkers lamenting that the new taxes might see them close shop. They also say that the county government has forced them to move from the central business district without availing an optional location for their trade. Tutongo atakula wapi, family yangu, hiko naangaleo wazazi wangu, sina nini wala nini wala nini. Tutalipa nyumba na nini, tutaishi ajisisi hoka.
The new taxes that have seen similar demonstrations in Nairobi, Machakos, Kakamega and Nakuru counties are as a result of financial demands to sustain the county governments. Betty Kialo, KTN. The Kenya National Parents Association now wants the government to stop charging school fees in both primary and secondary public schools. The association says all levies paid in public schools are illegal. Angel Katusia now reports. The Kenya National Association of Parents Secretary General arrived at the Nairobi High Court to sue the government. Musa Ndunda asked the court to issue orders against the charging of fees and other levies in public primary and secondary schools as stipulated in the Basic Education Act 2013. Now the Ministry of Education, the Teachers Service Commission and the Attorney General have been given two weeks to respond to the suit. This comes just a few days after the Ministry of Education barred public primary schools from charging any fees when admitting new pupils. The ministry's directive followed complaints by parents over high fees introduced by some public schools. The education is free. Why should they charge some more money? And what is it for? The Parents Association wants the Ministry of Education to ensure schools fully adhere to the Act's provisions. The Basic Education Act 2013 states, among others, that no child should be denied admission in public schools and that that admission should be free. Further, every child has the right to free and compulsory primary and secondary education and free tuition. Some schools have taken advantage of the laxity in the, in the follow-up in the, in the administration. And most, like the school my, my daughter was, we used to get fee structures, but when we were paying school fees, we would, we would pay much more. The association also sought the court's order to have the Ministry of Education constitute boards of management for public primary and secondary schools as enshrined in law. KNAP told the court appointments of county education directors should be stopped until the case is heard on the 18th of February. Free primary education was introduced in 2003 by then President Mwai Kibaki and Kenyans are still asking just how free is that free education. Angel Katusha KTN. Now the fight against poaching and illegal wildlife trade has stepped a notch higher. That's right. Just weeks after the enactment of the Wildlife Conservation Act, the Kenya Wildlife Service has now launched an operation against illegal game trade. It is Sunday morning and somewhere along Gitanga Road, a man stands by the road, wooing passers-by to his business. His item of trade? Lovebirds. These particular ones are the Fisher's lovebird species, which are small birds belonging to the parrot family, green, orange, and golden yellow in color, believed to pair up for life, hence nicknamed lovebirds. How much do you sell them for? How much do you sell them for? Do you have any more? Because if I want some, can you get some for me? Yeah. Just about to seal the deal, and with a bonus of another order placed, it is a good day for the trader. Oh my God. Yeah. But not so fast. Unknown to the trader, his client is a Kenya Wildlife Service officer with a hidden camera working undercover in an ongoing KWS operation to nab all illegal wildlife traders. And the lovebirds, an indigenous species, are by law not for commercial trade unless with permission. <laughs> The operation follows the enactment of the Wildlife Conservation and Management Bill on the 10th of January. The new law is aimed at strengthening the fight against poaching and promoting the conservation of wildlife species. Section 85 of the 10th Clause of the Wildlife Conservation and Management Bill 2013 states that no person shall import, export, re-export, or otherwise trade in any wildlife species without a permit issued by the service. 
It further states in section 80 that the permit shall be in a prescribed manner and may set conditions in regard to duration, infrastructure development, and any other aspects as may be appropriate. What you should know is that you will also need a permit to keep exotic bird species at your home. Species that are also specified in the act, including quails and lovebirds, such as the ones intercepted. Whoever needs to keep them, and we urge the public to tell us, to inform uh, the management of Kenya wildlife. At the moment, Steve Juma faces the possibility of being sentenced to not less than one year in jail or a fine of up to 200,000 shillings or both. This is just an example of the heavy weight with which the new law is intended to operate. The anti-poaching campaign has largely been seen to focus on elephants and rhinos. Currently, the fight has been widened to cover a variety of species. The message, unless permitted, Keep your hands off the wildlife. Sharon Mamani, KTN. Let's go to that controversial standard railway gauge issue and the Public Investments Committee of Parliament is demanding evidence that the tendering process for the gauge railway project is above board. The committee is investigating the tender following questions over the procuring process. I... My call is Kamau. The Public Investments Committee of the National Assembly grilled Transport Secretary Engineer Michael Kamau, Kenya Railway Acting Managing Director Alfred Madeka, and the Public Procurement Oversight Authority Director General Maurice Juma Monday. The three were at pains to explain the tendering process of the Chinese funded project to build a standard gauge railway from Mombasa to Malaba and into Uganda. We have a memorandum of understanding which was approved by the AG and the letter from the entity referring to a government to government arrangement. The main point of discussion Monday was a letter supposedly written to PPOA by Attorney General Professor Kido Mwegai, raising the red flag of the multi billion shilling project's tendering process. There have been questions on whether the tender, which has been awarded to China Road and Bridge Corporation, is really on a government to government basis. The process was uh, stopped, it was not completed. <laughs> It was not cancelled because they had no... Uh, yes, we have different interpretations to the same, but I think let's just accept your version because you have the right to be heard. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, there's a letter to that effect. Yeah, no Referring to the Public Procurement Act, the Attorney General's letter purports the failure by PPOA to promote fair competition, transparency and accountability. It also refers to an initial tender that was allegedly cancelled, something the government has since denied. A visibly angry Kamau asked the parliamentary committees probing the matter to summon the Attorney General as well so that he can answer questions raised over the said letter. To say that the Attorney General would state that the process is fraud and then later come and give an opinion on a process that is fraud, if from the beginning the opinion, the, 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 the process was flawed, and then he comes midway. But I think the best thing, the best thing, Mr. Chairman, is for the Attorney General to answer this. We are in one government, we are in the executive, he can answer this. In seven days, the procurement body and Kenya Railways are expected to table a report before the Investments Committee detailing how the tendering process was carried out. With that, there are conditions for the China uh, government in funding these kind of projects where they have the one who are advancing the financing. Meanwhile, the Parliamentary Transport Committee will begin grilling government officials on the same issue Wednesday. Among those said to be questioned by the Minor Commander Chaired Committee, our Chief of Staff of the Deputy President's Office, Marianne Kitani, Transport Principal Secretary Nduva Moli, and Attorney General Gedu Mwigai. Ben Kitili, KTN. Now, uh, beginning the end of this month, you will be paying more uh, to the National Social Security Fund. And that story is forming the basis of our big question tonight. We are asking, do you support the new NSSF rates? Do you support the introduction, rather, of the new NSSF rates? 22155 is our text number. Start with a yes or no, please, followed by a brief comment. We'd love to hear from you on that. You can also get in touch with us on Twitter at Yvonne Aquara, at KTN Kenya, and at Wilson underscore Mburu. I want to read one for you. Liech Oyango, you say it's a matter of many not trusting NSSF with handling of the cash and not necessarily the rates. 
Jeffrey Nyabuti says, I think that is creating more corruption avenues for some few wolves. They can't manage 200 shillings. Sembuse, 5,000. Well, that's what you feel. Indeed, keep your comments coming in and we will continue to sample them throughout this live newscast. Don't you go away. We'll be back after the break. Deputy President William Ruto's case at The Hague resumes. Nasikia na uzuni sana sababu sasa hao watu walikuja wakaribu mali zetu si wenyewe tumefika hapa asubuhi tujafungua kazi tuna watoto mimi kama mimi mtoto wangu atakula wapi familia yangu iko naangalia wazazi wangu sina nini wala nini wala nini tutalipa nyumba na nini tutaishi aje sisi hokas tunaomba governor Mr. Joe akuja hapa atuambie vile situation na watu wake You're watching KTN Prime Welcome back. You're watching KTN Prime. We're glad you're watching. Right. President, Deputy President, rather, William Ruto is back at the International Criminal Court for his ongoing case on crimes against humanity. Now, Ruto is expected to be at The Hague until Wednesday as the court has granted him excusal from continuous presence in his case. Early Monday morning and Deputy President William Ruto walked back into the now familiar doors of the International Criminal Court. Ruto is back at The Hague even after the ICC judges granted him excusal from continuous trial. There were, however, caveats in that decision which required Ruto to be physically present in court during the first five days of hearings starting after a judicial recess. Would you like me to read the page? The case against the deputy president had adjourned in September of last year. Ruto, under the set clause, will be forced to be in court until Wednesday. The deputy president skipped the first two days of his trial, which resumed on Thursday to attend to national duty, with President Uhuru Kenyatta being away in Angola. Chief Prosecutor Fatu Bensouda has given indications of challenging the judge's decision allowing Ruto to attend trial occasionally, but reports are that she is still undecided. With Ruto's case back in session, focus has also moved to President Uhuru Kenyatta's case, which is intended to begin in February. Fatu Bensouda has, however, asked the court to postpone the commencement date to allow her to gather more evidence. The judges are yet to give a ruling on this. Ruto's case, in the meantime, continues uninterrupted, with the ninth prosecution witness taking his stand today. Edith Kimani, KTN. Right, and we want to take a short break right now. We do want to remind you to keep your comments coming in. We're asking you about the new NSSF rates. So please keep your comments coming in on text and on Twitter. For now, we take a short break. Wilson Boru will be right back with the business news. Absolutely. Don't you go away. Economists predict tough times in 2014 as food prices expected to soar. You're watching KTN Prime. Welcome back. You're watching KTN Business. 2014 is expected to be a tough year for most Kenyan families and businesses. This follows a projection by analysts at Pine Bridge Investments that inflation will hit the double digits. Michael Karanja has those details. In 2013, economic growth accelerated as macroeconomic conditions improved. This saw inflation remain in a single-digit range as the exchange rate remained stable. But despite this relative stability, Kenyans are yet to feel the effects of a growing economy. In an Ipsos Sinovit survey released late last year, over 60% of Kenyans expressed fears that inflation would worsen, adding to their economic woes. In the assessment, Pine Bridge Investments indicate that rising food prices, the annual hike in cost of education, and the continued implementation of the VAT Act will see inflation hit 10% in 2014. 
uh, will peak at 9-10%, will average at about 7% for the six months uh, of 2014. This, the first half of 2014, is when we expect to see inflationary uh, or the cost of living actually peak. Uh, at the highest level and that's when we see some of the shocks that we laid out uh, possibly come into the form. But despite the doom and gloom of having to dig deeper for access to goods and services, political stability in Kenya is expected to yield accelerated growth for the country. This, the analysts add, will see the country fall short of its 5.6% growth target with 48 to 5% growth being the most realistic outcome. But the analysts believe that this can be reversed in 2014 to spur rapid economic growth. With the realization of tangible benefits in new economic sectors like mining, oil and gas beginning to show face, the tide appears to be changing. Coupled with recent positive outlook on the global front, growth prospects could be realized. What underlines our expectation of 5.8% is the fact that government has always been the biggest contributor of growth and we expect that uh, to start playing a key role uh, going forward. However, the analysts also caution that for all this to be realized and sustained, real reforms must be put in place. Michael Karanja, KTN Business. Let's move on. The Competition Authority of Kenya says it is keeping its eyes on a number of farms in the country that it believes their actions border on unfair trade practices. Adelit Changole spoke to the Director General of the Authority on his 2014 outlook and brings us this report. Along Nairobi's workshop road sits the Competition Authority of Kenya, a body that is charged with encouraging fair trade practices by controlling monopolies, concentrations of economic power and prices. The Kenyan economy is market-based, but that doesn't mean that the market should be led to be managed by private monopolies. There is a need of a regulator. To achieve this, the authority looks for and prosecutes businesses found to be engaging in restrictive trade practices or abusing their dominant market position at the expense of the consumer. Mergers and acquisitions are also a subject of the authority's role. Specific companies we are, we are investigating from uh, beverages uh, to uh, telephony. Also in regard to other areas we are focusing on is sugar. But some of what now appears to be unfair trade practices in the market has brought limelight to the authority. Case in point has been the acquisition of rival companies by Brookside Dairy, which is perceived to be running competitors out of the market. There's 4.5 billion liters of milk which is not being processed. Mm -hmm. And therefore, any entrant into the market is assured of a cake of 4.5 billion liters. So there's no one who is being denied entry. And there's no one who is being, being denied growth. Going forward, the authority says it will recruit more officers to enhance its oversight role and linkages with other government bodies to facilitate information sharing. Adelaide Changole, KTN Business. The Kirio Valley Development Authority has started a pilot tomato greenhouse project set to generate up to 5 million shillings in a year. This in the quest to encourage farmers in the Rift Valley to be involved in alternative ways of income generating activities. Masi Kandie with that report from the Rift. It is the first pilot project, one that is said to offer an alternative means of revenue generation, unlike the norm here in the Rift, which is maize farming. One acre can give you six million shillings in six, in six to seven months, meaning you, a farmer can actually get 10 million shillings in one acre. So you can compare 30,000 uh, uh, earnings from maize in a year to about 10 million shillings. But it's not an example set for the farmers only. The greenhouses that cost the Kerio Valley Development Authority 4.5 million shillings for five greenhouses is set to encourage youth and women groups to invest in such, with one greenhouse costing 900,000, capable of stocking 2,100 tomato plants. And we had several farmers within Washington and the neighboring counties doing this, then there will be an opportunity for value addition uh, to make tomato choice. 
The project will be showcased in every county in the Kerio Valley, including Samburu, Turkana and West Pokot counties. The managing director, David Kimosop, says the Fast Tomato project is expected to solve some, if not all, the hunger problems in the region. Uh, this would be the way to go. And uh, we will be soon launching another greenhouse, three greenhouses in Lordwood Town, just to support uh, farming of vegetables within Turkana County. The current market price for tomatoes is 50 shillings per kilo. KVDA anticipates to make at least 1.2 million in the first harvest of one greenhouse. Masikandie KTN, Eldoret, Wasingishu County. Let's now have a look at other stories forming business news around the country. Over 600 tourists from 18 western countries arrived this morning in the coastal city of Mombasa. The tourists arrived aboard a cruise ship for a one-day tour of Tsavo, Shimba Hills and Mombasa. According to the Kenya Port Authority, the docking of the ship in Mombasa port is a sign of renewed trust on the safety and security of the port city that had suffered in the past over threats related to terrorism. Elsewhere, the Cooperative Bank of Kenya has increased its secondary school scholarship for bright but financially disadvantaged children from across the country to 2,800 students in four years. From the previous 1,400 students, the additional scholarships will be awarded by the bank's regional delegates forum and the 47 county governors. According to Cop Bank Managing Director Gideon Muriuki, the scholarships will be awarded only to deserving students. And finally, Sami Latema has taken office as the chairperson of the National Irrigation Board for a period of three years, replacing Daniel Munyao Mule. Key on the new chairman's to-do list will be to spearhead the delivery of the one million acre Galana Kalalu irrigation scheme recently launched. Philip Keitan Katian. And now, here are the day's financials. And at this point, we'd like to revisit our top story for you tonight on KTN Prime. The National Social Security Fund is yet again on the chopping block as its increased deductions for workers come into effect. NSSF's history of alleged mismanagement of pension contributions has left Kenyans suspicious of the new rates. Those earning below 6,000 shillings per month will now contribute 360 shillings monthly. And those earning 18,000 shillings and above will now part with 720 shillings per month with the employer contributing a similar amount. Tax and pension experts laud the government on its attempts to develop a sound pension scheme, but they are quick to point out that this should be implemented gradually. NSSF is currently struggling to untangle the controversies surrounding its Tassia housing project, and a construction tender awarded to Chinese company Xinji has also sparked uproar. Well, we're going to take a short break now, but um, not before we give you some of the responses of our BQ tonight when we are asking, do you support the introduction of the new NSSF rates? I think we can't get some tweets here. Let me just read this one from Daniel Ondiere, who says, No, I don't. How can they secure my future financial security by creating insecurity today? Indeed. Abbas Ochula, you say, I don't think NSSF have the capacity to handle the new scheme. We can take a look at some others here. Um, 
this small kips you say no kenyans uh, are already um, having an expensive cost of living or rather a high cost of living which is beyond repair spare us this one please ngogi wa madoni says a life expectancy in the country is around 45 years Many may not live to enjoy the fruits of their labor. All right, keep your comments coming in and we will continue to share them. For now though, we want to hand you over to Nick Modimbo who's in our sports studio tonight with the latest updates in the world of sports. Nick, it's good to see you. What do you have for us tonight? Good to see you to Yvonne. Today we're having first story about the fan base in Nakuru as far as uh, rugby is concerned and of course golf that standard group is actually organizing later in the year and many more as far as international news is concerned. All that after the break. Keep it getting prime. Let's now look at the day's sports. I am Nicholas Mudimba. Fans are an important part in ensuring a team or a person excels in any competition. For top friend Akura FC, the fans have always been there, both in the bad times and the good times at home and away. The Caton crew caught up with the fans over the weekend during a rugby league match where they beat Nondis 98 in a tough Kenya Cup league match. The top Fry Nakuru RFC fans were popularly known as Wanyore. Their input was the rugby fraternity has continued to be felt both by their home side and by their opponents as their zeal to see Nakuru RFC excel and their passion while on the stands can never be matched. Passionate fan base in, uh, in Nakuru. Uh, top Fry Nakuru is a, is a, in itself is a brand. Top Fry is a brand. Nakuru is a brand. Uh, both of them together, you know, is very is a very, very passionate following. Saizi. Ukiangalia scores ni 19 8 na ndizo matukazia kidogo katika moja but tunajivunia kwa wanyore Queens next weekend tuna come Wanyore will not only support their team at home like many rugby league teams but will also go an extra mile of traveling with the team for away matches all over the country and across the borders regardless of the tournament Some of the fans used to be players you know of of Nakuru so um that is why each and every game, whether it's in Uganda, as in uh, down there in Western or in Coast, they have to show up. Few try to go the market. Every couple every week, lazima to take the posters to inform uh, our 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 fans kuna game. So in our make aware, we na jua pali tunacheza na team tunenda kucheza na. Top Fry Nakuru RFC are the defending rugby league champions in a current and beaten this season. Yeah, my fan. Nimbaya. Yeah, Nana Guru Rugby. Yeah, ah, what a worthy. Ah, On Saturday, they beat total non script 19 to 8 in a tough Kenya Cup League match at Nakuru Athletics Club, though they failed to collect a bonus point. Victor Ogale, KTN Sports. To golf now, the Standard Group has partnered with the Kenya Ladies Golf Union to support and raise funds for the forthcoming All-Africa Challenge Trophy slated for June 7th to 12th at the Bodega Golf Club here in Nairobi. The Continental Championships has attracted 100 players from across 25 African nations before the ASCT, KLGU and the Standard Group will hold a cut and raise event this Friday at the Nairobi's Vet Lab Golf Club to be preceded by other four subsequent fundraiser events. The four fundraiser events to follow the cut and raiser will be held at the Mudaiga Golf Club, Karen County Club, Royal Nairobi Golf Club and Sigona Golf Club. KLGU intends to raise 17.8 million shillings to be used in the successful running of the event that aims to promoting For ladies golf product, in Africa. Which is going to cost us about 17.8 million. We have staged various fundraising events. The first one, which I've said, is going to take uh, place in a vet lab. We'll have other events in uh, Modaiga on the 28th of March and in Karen on the 14th of April. I think this event is really going to raise the game of golf among ladies. As you know, golf is one of those sports. It's not like football or rugby. It's uh, in terms of publicity, it's a bit low key. That sports, Sam Nicholas Mudim. Have yourself a great night.
Uh, before we wind up our bulletin, and first of all, thank you very much to Nick Madimba for the sports news. But before we wind up, here's an interesting one. Now, Israel has become the first country to outlaw revenge porn banning sexually explicit images posted online without the subject's consent. Now, in recent years, the warring practice has been growing around the world when with this law, the Israeli lawmakers are further hoping that other countries are going to follow suit. Watch this. In Israel, they call it virtual rape, maliciously uploading intimate pornographic images of former partners often by spurned exes seeking revenge. And like rape, revenge porn can shatter lives. <laughs> Judith, not a real name, is a 24-year-old Israeli woman who knows its devastating impact. She only learned her ex-boyfriend had posted an intimate video of her when it appeared on social media sites and her phone started to ring. The experience was so horrific, she says. She's twice tried to commit suicide. I went totally insane, had anxiety attacks. I was hospitalized and tore my hair out. I cried every night. I couldn't go out. I get phone calls the whole day from friends I hadn't seen in years. Everyone saw it, including my family. These days, compromising images meant to remain private between couples can so easily be made very public when a relationship comes to an end. The problem of revenge porn has become increasingly common around the world, with some websites catering to spurned exes looking to shame former partners. Elsewhere, lawmakers have struggled to respond, even rejecting legislation because it may limit freedom of speech. But not here in Israel, where revenge porn offenders are now sex criminals who face up to five years in jail. Uh, we try to take care of the middle class in Israel. The Israeli lawmaker who pushed through the measure told me it sends a clear message to couples, one that should be echoed to stem what she calls a global epidemic of revenge porn. Uh, the answer is not don't take pictures and think twice of what you're doing and with whom you're doing what. And I want to say to the other side, you don't want to be a sexual uh, criminal until the rest of your life. Think about what you're doing. You have to have borders or boundaries. But so many boundaries have already been crossed. This whole year I have tried to come to terms with it, tried to forget, but I can't. It chases me. I have lived in four cities, had five jobs. Every place I work, they talk behind my back because my name is all over the web. It's the lasting consequences of revenge porn, a problem no amount of legislation in this internet age can easily solve. Matthew Chance, CNN Jerusalem. Here's another law. Don't pose nude. Ever. Ever. Okay. It is sad. For anyone. Uh, yes, true. But, you know, I think it's it's really mean. But anyway, you know, these are what we call first world problems. Mm. Well, they're yeah, putting right. in laws against revenge porn. We are putting in laws for NSSF. <laughs> That's where we are at now. So, you know, we, we have a long way to go to get to, to Israel. Get to, yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Anyway, let's remind you of our big question tonight, which was regarding a law, not revenge porn, but the NSSF Amendments Act. Uh, that puts into law some new rates and the poll is in yes. results um, are 88% of you do not agree with the law um, and 12% uh, of you agree with the law right. so it is yeah, no 88% no and 12% yes right let's take a look at the 88% who did not agree Patrick Simpson no I do not the new NSSF rates must be reviewed they are burdening the Monanchi who up to now continues to languish in great poverty there's a yes here, and um, I must say this was a bit difficult to find. Yes, it is a good thing. This is uh, from uh, Robert Godier in Vihigo. He says, yes, this is a good thing, but most Kenyans don't know the importance. NSSF, please do member education. Indeed, maybe that's uh, something, some uh, civic education regarding that, that. That would be quite helpful, actually. Indeed. We thank you for your time this evening. Thank you for joining us on KTN Prime, and indeed for participating as well. Enjoy the rest of your viewing. Good night. Good night.